So I know it may seem like we're doing one big project at a time in the videos, but really we're working on a billion things all at once. So today it's going to be more of a miscellaneous Monday thing. We're going to share with you one of those side little detours. And the project of today is replacing our chain. Yes. Yeah, so two years ago in Miami, before we left, we replaced our rope anchor road with all chain because in the Caribbean there's um, coral heads and stuff that can chafe your line, which isn't good. Unfortunately, we didn't have enough money to buy high quality chain. We bought high strength chain. We got high test G43 chain, but unfortunately it wasn't made to a very high standard, which means after two years, it's all rusty. The links have already stretched so that they don't fit in our windlass anymore. And there's, there's actual chunks of rust coming off of it. It's, it's really bad. So today we're gonna pull all the old chain and the anchor uh, and replace it with new stuff. And probably we're gonna have to put a new swivel on because our old swivel is probably not gonna come off without a grinder. So let's do it. So one of the problems with having such rusty chain is when it goes down through the hole in the deck and piles up down in the chain locker, it piles up into a big long pile and doesn't like slough down. And because of that, then when we go sailing, the whole thing rolls over so there's chain upside down on itself. Um, and when you're trying to take it out, it kind of knots up and won't like easily fall down because new chain and, and is usually pretty smooth, so it kind of undoes itself as it goes. But this chain keeps knotting itself up and won't come up through the hole. Fix it, Kiko, fix it. So like, this is what we're talking about by chunks falling off, look at this. Like you can just peel it off with your fingers. It's important to know that just because it's made in China doesn't mean it's poor quality. Um, you can get anything manufactured in China. Our Rockna is actually manufactured in China, but it's manufactured to a higher specification. Um, this chain was manufactured to a very low specification, and that's why it's falling apart after only two years, like actually falling apart. Chain should look like this after 50 years. This is the last 20 feet of our chain. It's a part that we never really used very much. Um, and as you can see, it doesn't have chunks falling off. This is what chain should look like after about 10 years. And you can normally get it regalvanized if it hasn't stretched too much. Uh, but this is the exact same chain. This is the part that's been in, in the ocean and what we've been using. And there's just, there's just big chunks falling off of it. So our new chain is actually manufactured in China as well, but it's manufactured to the Canadian spec, the specifications that uh, Canada requires high test chain to be made to, which is a much higher spec than this is. So it should last uh, a lot longer, hopefully. Uh, we're gonna scrap this chain because it's not good for anything anymore. So this is our old swivel, also manufactured in China to a low standard. Um, but it's held in by these little, uh, these little tiny Allen screws that hold the pin in, and they've already stripped when we tried to take it out before, so I'm gonna have to cut it off, unfortunately. Alright, now that the chain is out and uh, it's time to clean up. So we're going to clean the deck and all the rust and then we're going to clean inside the chain locker as well. One of the not so nice things that all that rusty chain left was a really dirty chain locker. So Kika's cleaning it out. How's it going in there, Scrubby? Good, it's, uh, it's very dirty. I bet. Is that and your this. implement of death? <laughs> Ew. And that's Nasty. clean compared to what it was before. Well, now is time for the poop stain remover. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> You're repping the just cats, huh? That's oh, why yeah. they put it on the back. <laughs> A little. <coughs> you want a respirator? Yeah. Yeah, it smells really strong. I don't want to know what that stuff is. 
It yeah, works, so. I don't want to know what's in that jar because it's incredible how well it works. This is uh, it's this is not a paid advertisement from whatever rust remover that is. It's just uh, someone recommended it to us, and we tested it on our hull where the chain had been like the rust stain from the chain had been like dripping down the side of our hull, and two minutes later all the rust was gone. It was amazing. Is that so that, no, actually I think it was Brandon. Brandon from. Um, oh. Parasailing and Brandon from the Impossible, Impossible Dream. Dream. I think he was the one who recommended it. So thanks, buddy, because it works really, really well. Um, maybe we'll even leave a link for it in the description of this video because it works so well. So why I just let it stay? Yeah, just let it sit for like three, five minutes or so and then come in and it hose it all out. Okay. It's all in there? I think so. We're just gonna spray everything that was rusty with this and hopefully it works on most of it. It's already working on the rope. It's just kind of creepy. Oh my gosh, yeah, it's like bleach. Well, this was another one of our issues. This is the chain roller, and it's uh, it's made out of aluminum. So where the anchor's been sitting and where the chain's been sliding over, it created like a flat spot, if you see that. And it also doesn't have a groove in the middle so that the chain uh, aligns itself as it comes in. So the chain was actually rotating as it came in. Um, but luckily, Kika's dad runs a machine shop in Haiti. And he made that bad boy. And he made this bad boy. It's heavy as hell. It has the groove in the middle for the chain and uh, it should fit a lot better and it should last a lot longer. It's also a much larger diameter. It doesn't look like it, but it's almost double the diameter in the middle so that it should make it easier to pull the anchor up and over and the anchor chain. Thanks, Dad. Ow. <laughs> just like, you just, just like headbutted me. I don't think you're in that shot anyway. <laughs> okay, you're a little well, too have this uh, piece of rope down through the windlass, through the hoss pipe, into a big monkey fist tied on the bottom so that it can't come out. Uh, and then we sort of weave it through the end of the chain. So it does two things. One, if you accidentally drop too much chain, it'll catch it from losing all your chain overboard. And two, if for some reason we'd ever need to like cut anchor and leave like it was stuck and there was a boat drag, I don't really know why we'd ever need to. but. You could let out all the chain and then just cut this rope, uh, tie like a fender off to the end of it or something, cut it, come back for it later. So it kind of acts as two, as, uh, two safety precautions, I guess. Uh, and the way we put it on, it's not really a splice, we just kind of take some chain and then just weave it through every couple of links. Because it's not going to hold the weight of the boat, it's just to keep the chain from falling in the ocean. All right, our last anchor swivel didn't survive the salt water very well. It was another Chinese made, pretty inexpensive, got all rusty and seized up. Uh, this one is made in Italy, K9, K9NG, something like that. Looks like that. Uh, it's a much better design. It only has one um, screw holding the whole thing together, so it should be easier to take off again in the future. And um, yeah, we just really like having a swivel. It helps keep the chain from getting all knotted up and it helps bring the anchor up over the bow a lot easier too. It's all sleek and smooth and it just flops over the bow really easily. Um, this one is pretty slick. It comes apart with just one much larger Allen screw. Get a lot more torque without stripping it. 
All right, so the Allen screw comes out. This comes off. That's the part that goes to the chain. This breaks free and then swivels 180 and comes apart. And that's the part that goes to the actual anchor. So to put it together, this part goes to the anchor, rotates, and now it's locked in place. And then you put these two parts on here. That part goes to the chain. And it all comes together like that. Allen screw goes in here, but first I'm gonna put some Loctite on it. That's it. Swivelicious. We like having our anchor swivel attached directly to the anchor, which is actually um, what they recommend. You do have to be a little bit careful pulling the anchor out and make sure when you pull the anchor out, you're pulling straight up and over the anchor because if you start to pull on the side, theoretically it could bend this stainless shank and do damage to it. Um, we had our old swivel on for two, two and a half years, anchoring in all sorts of different situations. Uh, we never had an issue with it bending, um, but we were also pretty um, aware of how we were pulling our anchor and making sure we we're pulling straight over it. So we weren't pulling off the side or anything like that. Um, seems to work well, especially because then you don't need an anchor swivel and then a piece of chain and then a shackle and it makes the retrieval process a bit more messy. But yeah, let's get this thing on the boat. So uh, I almost broke Dan's hint today. It's fine. Just a little bruised. It's all good. Yeah. Probably shouldn't have had my hand there because I knew the anchor touches. Yeah, it's, it's, oh, well. it's, it's probably my fault too. I'm sorry. Is it? Kissing. <laughs> sorry. It's supposed to be a soft even my, kiss. Even my kiss hurts. Nope. <laughs> anyway guys, I really hope you enjoyed this uh, miscellaneous video. And uh, if you did, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to... <laughs> Subscribe for more videos. Yeah. Oh yeah. That happened. It's easy. Just click on that, and we'll see you on Thursday. <laughs>